And hello there. Uh, welcome to another scripting tutorial. Now, oh my goodness, it's been so long since uh, my last scripting tutorial, but oh well. Uh, I, I, I realized that I hadn't actually done one on remote functions and remote events, which are two very important things if you want to make your game filtering enabled to protect against exploiters. Now, I'm going to quickly go over what filtering enabled is first just a you know just a quick briefing for people who may not know um, if you go into your workspace now sorry for the bad graphics uh, quality this video was extremely compressed um, anyway if we go to workspace uh, in Explorer there's a property here called filtering enabled if that is uh, false so it's not being checked then it means that Anybody uh, on the client can update uh, the workspace or any bricks in the game. They can update it from their client and they can basically change things and delete bricks and do all sorts of things from, from their computer uh, to, to basically exploit the game and make it a misery for everybody. So um, let's just put things into perspective quickly. Let's just imagine I am... I'm going to show you exactly what filtering enabled is like. So let's, let's, let's just imagine that I am... Uh, an exploiter. I'm going to be your typical exploiter. So, just imagine that I'm I don't know some five-year-old kid with with no friends, and I, I I I I become happy when I see other people in misery on games because I've exploited them. Um, okay, so we've got things you know we've imagined that. Now, I am in game. I have my leader stats, and I have my points here in game. Okay, so let's just uh, oh goodness me. Let me go into start player start server. So we have filtering enabled off. Okay, filtering enabled is off. Let's go into player mode whenever it wants to load. And let's go player, insert my leader stats. Uh, wherever it is, int value, uh, leader stats. In fact, it's not going to show because I was supposed to have done that. Let me just call it points then. Let me just call it points. Okay, so here are my points in my player. I am an exploiter, evil. Uh, I can change my points to 500 from my computer, from the client. Uh, this is the client, by the way, the thing that is on your computer. And the server is uh, not on your computer. It's in Roblox. But anyway, the server is a server and the client is a client. So you know the difference between client and server. Um, I can change my points to 500 from my client because filtering enabled is off but if filtering enabled was on I wouldn't be able to do that um, points and anything in the player except from the player GUI uh, and anything in the workspace if filtering is on all of that can only be changed from the server um, that means if you have uh, scripts that are running in the workspace or in server script service um, that is script those are scripts that are in the server and those are the scripts that can change things that are in the workspace like bricks uh, players uh, points and leader stats and all that sort of thing but if you are in uh, on your client so let's say you have a script in, in, in starter player or in your script in starter pack or starter GUI um, that script is a local script and it will only uh, change things uh, in, in, in your, on your clients. So if you were to change your points, uh, like exploit, um, whilst filtering enable is on, and you change your points, those that change will only show for you and nobody else. If you were to delete a brick um, with filtering enabled on by exploiting, that would only show for you, and that brick would be deleted for only you and nobody else. So you'd basically just be wasting your time <laughs> by deleting a brick and exploiting with filtering enabled on. So now you know what filtering enabled is roughly. Uh, let's get on to how to actually make filtering enabled work. So with filtering enabled enabled whoops that sounded weird. Filtering enabled is on. You can't um, if you have a local script in your uh, starter pack um, and you want to change your points you can't just change your points uh, like you normally would so let's say we have a script here and it's going to load in the backpack uh, and we want to say player equals game dot players dot local player and player dot points equals 500 we can't do that from the starter pack anymore because filtering enabled is on and if we change it like this it will only show for 
us and it will not show for anybody else in the server that my points have changed to 500. So the way to do this is we need to oh, print poo, oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> I forgot about that script. We need to make a script in the workspace which is going to run on the server. We can call that remote server. Let's just, you know, this is just for purpose of tutorial. You can call it whatever you want. And insert into that script a remote event. And call that remote event something like, I don't know, change points. So we call it change point. Oh, that's not spelt right, is it? Oh, for goodness sake. Change points. Okay. Now inside the remote server we are going to type the following script script dot change points because we're referring to the change points uh, remote event dot on server event so when if when that event is called we are going to connect that to the function and you all know how to do events don't you it's the same thing as doing a, a game dot players dot player added uh, connect function. It's the same thing as doing that. So that's a player added event. This is a remote event uh, that has been called. So it's the, it's the same thing. Um, so when the change points event has been called, which we will do later, we will call it later, but let's just focus on this, um, it passes a parameter of player. Okay. So whenever you call a remote event that's on the server, it automatically passes player as a parameter, uh, which player called this event. And what we can do is we can say player dot points dot value equals five hundred, okay. And now, if we go off the remote script, uh, back into the local script, um, what we can do is we can go to game dot workspace dot remote server dot change points because just because filtering enabled is on doesn't mean we can't access the things that are in workspace we can still access the workspace we just can't change anything in the workspace so we've got the remote event here we are going to call a function on it which is just fire server and that is going to fire the event so it works just like uh, bindable functions and bindable events do but the only difference between bindable events and bindable functions and remote events and remote functions is I think that remote events and remote functions uh, can only be called from uh, on the server by a client and if you were to have a remote event inside the client it could only be called from the server to the client whereas with bindables uh, if you want to call uh, uh, an event, a bindable function from the client to another client script you'd use a bindable function so I don't know if that made sense so if you have two scripts um, and you want to do uh, call an event on that script uh, that are both inside the starter pack so that are both on your client you'd use bindables but if you want to call uh, an event on the server you'd use a remote so you might also be wondering what's the difference between remote events and remote functions the difference between those are remote events are called but when a remote event is called it doesn't wait for it so if I here's my local script if I want to print uh, hello there uh, straight after I call this event um, and if I go to the event script here and I do a wait 5 okay I can call that event and then instantly after I've called that event it will print this However, if this was a remote function, it would wait until the function is finished running. Uh, so it would wait five seconds, and then it would print here. And also, remote functions are used if you want to return a value. So if I wanted to return uh, true um, to the to the client, then I can say just local ball equals uh, and then I fire the function obviously this is this is an event so it wouldn't work but if that was a remote function we could return stuff but you can't return with events um, okay so that's pretty much the difference um, I'll show you how to use the remote functions but for now I think that's actually no I'll show you how to do the functions now I'll show you how to, okay let's put a function in there remote function okay remote function here uh, let's call that print stuff. Okay, so we're going to call this uh, remote function print stuff. 
when this function is called, we're going to do script dot print stuff. So it's easy as the same. Uh, we just need to access the uh, remote function. So script dot print stuff dot on server invoke because we're on the server, so it's on server invoke, not on client invoke. Um, so this is what you do with functions. You use invoke and not event, obviously. Uh, and then you do equals function, uh, and then we pass the parameter of player through because player is automatically passed through anyway. Um, and that's how you do a remote function. And then you can print whatever you want. Print hello, uh, and then yeah, that's your remote function. And then to call that, you would uh, just do game dot workspace. This is on the client, by the way. Um, game dot workspace dot remote server dot print stuff. Uh, invoke client uh, server. Invoke server. Okay. Remember, you don't need to pass uh, your player parameter here like that. You don't need to do that because it's automatic. It automatically passes the uh, player through. Okay. Right. Um, I'm not going to test it because I don't have a variable inside me called point, and it's just going to error, and I can't bother to do one. So, yeah, you can test it though. Uh, right. So that's how you do that. Now we know how to call the server from the client. Okay, so let me just give you some examples of when you'd need to do this. Let's say you had, um, I don't know, let's say you you click a GUI and that GUI will, I don't know, open a door somewhere. You can't open the door on the in the workspace from your client because you're changing, you have to change the rotation or C frame of a part inside the workspace and you can't do that from the client. So you, what you would do is you'd use a remote event or, or remote function, whichever one you uh, need to use. Uh, you know the differences between them so you have to choose which one you'd use. Um, and then you would call that, so you do game.workspace.remote.server.open.door fire server or invoke server. Um, and then you'd let the server, obviously you'd, you'd pass the parameters that you need. So let's go back to the server. Uh, if I'm doing uh, open door, so let's say I had uh, script open door as a remote event. Um, let's say there are many doors in the game. We need the name of the door that we're going to open. That's just a parameter, door name. And you would pass that parameter uh, through here. So let's say the door name is door one. And you would just pass that parameter like this. And notice how we get two parameters here on open door, player and door name, but we only need to pass one argument. They're actually called arguments when you're, I think they're called arguments when you're passing it and then parameters when you get it, like here, I don't know, same thing. Um, you only need to pass one here, but you get two here because player is done automatically. It automatically does the player. Right. Uh, yes, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can do the same thing on uh, functions as well. Uh, you can just pass your parameters here on functions as well. Right, so you know how to do client to server. What about server to client? Let's do that now. Um, oh, whoops. What you would do is, you could either use starter player, I think this is something new, I've never seen this before, starter player scripts. Uh, you could put local script. Oh, I've never used this thing before, so I'm not even going to bother with that. I'm going to uh, just do it like I normally do. Let's make. Oops. Let's delete that. Let's delete this. So we know how to do. We know how to call the server from the client now. We know how to do that. What if we want to do start to pack insert object? Let's call this remote client. What if we want the server to call the client? Because when you have filtering enabled on the server cannot access the player's GUI. Okay? You need to if the server wants to, wants to change the player's GUI, um, you'd need to do that through a, a remote remote event or remote function. So you would need the server to call a remote event or remote function on the client. So let's do that now. So the same thing, we had a remote server, we also need a remote client. Into that we add a uh, remote event. Okay? And let's call this change GUI. Insert, uh, go into the script. One tip here. When you're uh, in the remote client, because the script loads first and then the events load after it, you would need to do this. Uh, at least this is for me, this happens. Um, it often says that the script cannot find change GUI if I instantly do this. So script.changegui.onClient event connect. Uh, server does not pass any parameters automatically, so you can just leave the parameter list blank unless you decide to pass parameters on through the server. Um, 
there would be an error here saying change GUI is not a valid member of uh, of script. Um, to fix that, you just do this: script wait for child um, change GUI. So you just need to wait for the remote event. Just wait for it. Um, just do that, and then that should fix any problems. Right. Um, right. So let's go to the server now. Uh, server. So let's say you're in the main script of the game. You're in the main script, and we're looping through all the players. For i v in pairs game dot players. Oh, whoops. Uh, get players. Uh, do. Okay. So we want to call this uh, remote client. Now remember, if it's in starter pack, remote client is going to be added to the backpack, isn't it? So just do v dot backpack. Uh, you could also do if v find for just to be safe uh, then so just wait for the backpack uh, or you could do if uh, you could just do v wait for child backpack but um, this is just if the player has just entered the game and the backpack is not there yet uh, we check if it's there then v dot backpack and you could do the same thing with uh, you could also check for the remote client to see if that's there and also the event right so v dot backpack dot remote client dot change GUI uh, fire client and that's how you do that so instead of firing server because it's on the client you would fire client and that is how you would um, call a remote s uh, event from the server so you see how they work both ways you can call remote events from the client to the server and from the server to the client when you're calling it from client to server a parameter of player is passed through and uh, that's all you need to know. You know the difference now between remote events and remote functions. So functions return, and also functions uh, when you call remote function, you need to wait until the function is finished running, and then it goes onto the rest of the script. However, if you call a remote event, then it calls them like uh, simu how do you pronounce that? Simultaneously, simultaneously. However, where, whichever part of the world you're from, you pronounce it differently. But they run at the same time. Remote events you can call a remote event and they will run at the same time as you call the uh, as you run the rest of your script anyway that's all you need to know for remote events and remote functions and filtering enabled uh, now you can run a game without it getting exploited by damn exploiters okay I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I need to show you uh, not really so yes if you uh, and I haven't been I haven't been reading uh, YouTube comments for quite a while as well because I've been off YouTube for a while I've been busy with, with all sorts of stuff but uh, if you leave a comment uh, hopefully I will see it and reply to it uh, make sure you like subscribe and I shall catch you in the next tutorial whenever that will be hopefully hopefully soon not in a few years time now goodness me okay then goodbye people